Harlan Osmus, and welcome to this week's Agronomy Update. Joining me today is my guest, Mark Storr, Technical Services Representative from BSF. And our topic this week is fungicide application on corn and soybeans. So Mark, we've experienced some very wet and followed by very warm conditions for our entire spring and summer growing season. Will we see a benefit on corn and soybeans by applying fungicides this year? And if so, what benefits? Well, I think the answer is yes, Harlan. Uh, certainly, the planting con uh, conditions were not ideal. Uh, over the most of northern Iowa, you planted well later than what you would have liked to within a couple of weeks. Certainly, there's probably a, a field or two here or there that got planted fairly timely that probably looks pretty darn good if it didn't drown out because we've got a lot of those spots as well. But the deal is we need to consider is that we've had significant disease pressure uh, uh, unfolding already. We've identified both gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf spot and corn or northern corn leaf blight in corn. Uh, gray is kind of a surprise in a lot of northern Iowa. We don't see normally a lot of gray leaf spot, but we've had the heat. And uh, it was actually a bit of a surprise to see the northern show up because I thought it was too warm for northern. Yeah. But now we've seen significant infection in some of our hybrids. And it's, the onset has been early enough that uh, it could potentially cause some yield loss in corn. The other thing to keep in mind is because of later planting corn, you actually have a greater uh, likelihood of disease uh, infection in later planted corn. It has to do with the corn life cycle. Uh, when you plant corn late, it's in the, in the reproductive stages later than it normally would be. Later in the growing season is when you start to see the climate more or the environment more acceptable for disease infection, meaning a little more moisture, uh, dews that hang on longer, uh, you know, uh, foggy days, those types of things that increase uh, humidity in the canopy. And that's why we always see those uh, diseases typically unfold after tasseling. So this year, because things are gonna be maybe pushed back a little bit, uh, you're gonna be in the heart of the, the infection will, the infection occur uh, earlier in the lifespan of a late planted mm -hmm. corn mm -hmm. than if it would have plant, been planted timely. And therefore it has to live, the duration of that disease infection is gonna be longer and potentially the yield loss could be much more significant. So that makes sense. Uh, so in, uh judging performance of products in the past years, are there particular fungicide combinations that will perform better in this environment? Well, when you've got an infection, we always you know, think about the triazoles because they all have some curative properties. You need to define that. And you have to be able to make those applications within 24 to 72 hours of the infection. So that's extremely difficult to predict when an actual infection occurs because there's a latent period that goes by, normally a minimum of a week, before an infection will start to show up on a corn plant. But if you have known lesions on a plant, by using a triazole, uh, that will, if you can, predict or assume that some of the plant is being infected by new spores, they can actually be burned out or killed by that uh, type of a fungicide. But the, the downside is they have very short residual and they don't have any of the plant health effects of the strobilia chemistry is where we're really counting on carrying the load for the yield protection. Uh, there are preventative fungicides, they prevent the spores from actually uh, attacking or infecting the plant, mm -hmm. and they also have a lot of the plant uh, health attributes. But there are differences in those families of chemistries as well. The only other uh, uh, product out there is the SDHI inhibitors which are a different uh, site of action within the mitochondria. So they're quite different than the strobirulins. They also have some unique properties on certain diseases, but really the effect is more seemingly better in soybeans on the disease spectrum we have here. Uh, the SDHIs I think have uh, the greatest efficacy on rust in corn, but rust is not a significant disease of corn for us. And I'm talking to my colleagues down south, southern rust is non-existent. And of course, rust is one of those diseases that has to blow in for us mm -hmm. to get infection anyway. So I don't think there's gonna be probably a big value out of an SDHI in corn this year. So you spent quite a bit of time talking about fungicide in corn. Can we get excited about fungicide application in soybeans this year? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the beans have really come around. I mean, they look tough early, uh, but uh, from what I'm seeing out here, a lot of these beans are closing in on R2. Uh, and they're starting to, you know, they're going through that growth spurt. Once they finally got out of the wetness, they don't like wet feet. 
Uh, we have a lot of uh, septoria brown spot, which is an annual disease for us. I just came from a field here uh, earlier today that there's a lot of leaves already laying on the ground that have already been shucked off. And you got to remember that uh, even a year like this, later planted beans, the corn window was probably more significant than the bean window. We planted beans in a kind of a more normal time frame, if you will, maybe not as early as what we would have preferred, but there's still a tremendous amount of yield potential out there in those beans. And uh, rarely does anybody ever collect a federal crop payment on beans. They seem to naturally just up and out, outdo themselves. And you know they can look ugly and, and yield pretty nicely at the end of the year. So I think there's a tremendous amount of yield potential in those beans. Thank you for your knowledge and your comments today. Uh, thank you for joining this week's edition of the Agronomy Update.